The Macambo Club was located in East Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard. It opened in 1941 and was an instant hotspot in Los Angeles. The club was like no other, with a strong Hollywood vibe. And with big band swing becoming the most popular style of music, movie stars, swing dancers, and big band leaders would all vie for a seat or a set at the hottest new club in town. The interior was classy, with sunken ceilings, recessed lighting, white linen tablecloths, and for a time, waiters dressed in tuxedos with red jackets. Along the walls were glass cages holding live cockatoos, macaws, and other exotic birds. With swing music, the club became one of the most popular dance till dawn spots in town. On any given night, one might find the room filled with leading men and women from the motion picture industry. In 1943, when Frank Sinatra became a solo act, he made his Los Angeles debut at the Macambo. By the 1950s, only a small handful of black singers had made appearances at the hotspot. When Ella Fitzgerald was trying to get booked at the club, the owner, Charlie Morrison, was hesitant. Ella, while being black, was also considered a true jazz artist. The owner wasn't sure it would draw a crowd, unlike the popular tunes being sung in L.A. clubs by other famous singers. It was a fact that Eartha Kitt had performed in the club just a year or so earlier, and her performance was well received by the regulars. But the truth is, Ella, who had a reputation for singing extremely well, and who had a number of hits spanning back to the 1930s, just wasn't glamorous enough for the club in West Hollywood. According to those who knew Morrison, they said it wasn't race that kept him from presenting Ella. It was the idea that she wasn't attractive enough for his audience. She had put on considerable weight since her debut in 1937 while still in her teens. That's right, Ella just wasn't pretty enough for the owner. And no matter what his friends might say, when stacked on top of her being black, he just wasn't interested. Fitzgerald was known primarily for playing in New York City. She hadn't really toured the Wild West, let alone a sophisticated club such as the Macambo. It wasn't unusual in the 1950s and 60s for black artists to have to bypass certain venues for many reasons, but most often, race was always somewhere near the top of the list. Bottom line, Ella was being told, no, we don't want you, no matter what the reason. Enter Marilyn Monroe, the film actress, who was a big Ella Fitzgerald fan. She heard about the owner hedging on bringing her to the nightclub. In the book, Marilyn, The Passion and the Paradox, a biography of the actress's life, the author claims Marilyn contacted the owners of the Macambo, a top Sunset Strip nightclub, and persuaded them to hire Fitzgerald for a week. She also added some sugar on top by stating, she would attend every night, sit in the front row, and invite photographers to take her photo while enjoying the music inside the club. Morrison just couldn't pass up this free advertising from one of Hollywood's biggest female stars. Fitzgerald opened a week-long appearance starting on March 15, 1955. Ella would learn later that Marilyn Monroe had lobbied the owner for the booking, and the two became friends. And although their paths didn't cross often, there was a bond between the two women. The booking was instrumental in Fitzgerald's career, and it opened the doors not only at the famous Macambo, but at other nightclubs throughout the country, and for many other black singers and entertainers as well. And it was this week, 67 years ago, that Ella started her week-long appearance in Hollywood. Oh, and by the way, Ella nailed each performance and had the crowd cheering for more every single night. You can learn more about jazz artists like Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, or Louis Armstrong, or blues and rock artists like Jerry Lee Lewis, B.B. King, Janis Joplin, or Jefferson Airplane. The list goes on. Visit the Rock and Roll Professor website to view many of the different short courses and music appreciation to choose from. And a link to the Rock and Roll Professor is provided in the description below as well as a link to hear some of Ella's biggest hits.